Morning, peeps. Good morning, everyone. How we doing? All right, should we um, have a look and see what there is to talk about from the world of boxing today? There's always something. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget as well to like and share the vids. All right, let's start with this one. Uh, Tyson Fury on facing Usyk Joshua winner. You better have a big checkbook. Thought he was retired. Thought he said that was that. Um, after that fight with Dillian White, I've done what I needed to do. I've achieved what I needed to achieve. I've made loads of money. Um, and here we are now, what, less than two months? When was the fight? No, less than three months after the fight. He's now saying, if you have a big checkbook. <laughs> like, I like Tyson Fury. I think he's um, a fantastic boxer, fantastic character. But boy, does he often chat a bit of doo-doo. Um, but look, it was always going to be this case. Like, he was never, ever going to retire with the the chance, and it still is a chance, of fighting Anthony Joshua. It was, it was never going to happen. Do I think he will fight Usyk? He's clearly not scared of Usyk, but I just don't think, I don't think that grabs him. I don't think, I think Anthony Joshua, if Anthony Joshua comes off a good win, that fight, wherever it is in the world, preferably Wembley Stadium, that will get his juices flowing. And it will be, as he says here, a big checkbook. It will be a massive checkbook. Massive. So yeah, um, Tyson Fury's retirement is short-lived. He's actually on um, TalkSport right now. I'm filming this at 11 o'clock. He's on there right now um, speaking to Simon Jordan and Jim White. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see what he says. This is sad. I'm reading this out and I can't believe this is going ahead. Devin Alexander is going to fight Demarcus Corley. Jesus Christ, man. Even if I read this out five years ago, I would have said, oh, this is quite sad. The fact I'm reading it out now is just incredible. I mean, Demarcus Corley. Let me have a quick look at Demarcus Corley. He must be, he must be close to 50. 48. 48 years of age. Um... He is coming off a win against Lentwood at Dozier, who is 10 and 27. But yes, I don't know. I'm not. Mate, I mean, sometimes you want fighters to retire from the sport. Sometimes the sport retires fighters. Hopefully, it's not the case with both of those guys. Um, what's this? Uh, Tyson Fury again. And Robert Garcia and 10 men like him will not make Joshua beat Usyk. I mean, let's be honest, Fury, you're saying all these words and I guess you're trying to motivate Joshua because you hope that is the case. You really do. I mean, don't get me wrong. By the way, Usyk versus, um, Usyk versus Fury is a massive fight. It really is. I mean, it's a fight that will 100%, I think, happen over here in, in the UK. It's a big fight, right? I mean, Tyson Fury going to go and conquer the man that has beaten up a couple of Brits. <laughs> so it's a big fight, but... Again, the fight we want to see is Tyson Fury versus Asia, or at least the fight I want to see. I know there's a lot of boxing aficionados that want to see Fury versus Usyk. Um, I want to see Fury versus AJ desperately, especially if AJ beats Usyk. That, that's the, obviously the only way it works. Uh, big fight this weekend. Um, again, it continues sort of the run of big fight after big fight after big fight. This is one that a lot of people have been looking forward to. It might not be the one that drags in the casuals, but I think the hardcore boxing fans are very, very interested in Berterbiev versus Joe Smith. See, I say Berterbiev, some people say Berterbiev, but whichever, you know who I'm talking about. Um, Berterbiev unbeaten, 17-0. and 0. Joe Smith has suffered a couple of defeats, but this is really brick versus brick. Have, have you seen that clip that's going round of um, Berterbiev jabbing at this punch bag? Sorry, this, yeah, um, you know, that's a punch bag that's stuck to the wall. Have you, have you seen that? It's ridiculous. And these are, these are jabs. But these are power jabs that I will say are as hard as people's right hands. They're, they're ridiculous. And it reminds me um, of that scene. Sorry, I'm going way off subject here. But it reminds me of the scene in Kickboxer where um, Van Damme goes to get his brother Ice. And all he hears is dum, dum. And he's like, oh, what's that? What's that? And he goes and see Tong Po kicking the, um, the concrete pillar. It reminds me of that, the noise that Baturbev is making with those jabs. This guy is as mean as they get. And obviously hindsight's a wonderful thing because Canelo's been beaten by Bivol. And Bivol, to be fair, is a completely different style of boxer to Baturbev. But Baturbev would have hurt Canelo. I genuinely think he would have hurt him. 
Um, we know Canelo's got a chin and I get all that. But, I mean, look how small Canelo looked to Bivol on the night. He did, didn't he? And Bivol's not the biggest 175. This guy is huge. This guy, this guy is massive. And, um, yeah, what, what, what Baturbia forces you to do, he forces you to have a gut check. And most elite fighters are capable of going through a gut check. The problem that he does is that he forces you to have another gut check and another gut check. And most guys can't live with that. Honestly, they can't live with that. You could hurt him. I mean, you can cause him problems. You know, I'm not going to try and pretend that this guy, it doesn't get cracked. He does. I mean, we saw Callum Johnson put him down. Marcus Brown hurt him as well. But he recovers. And then he says, OK, that was yours. This is mine. And it's it, he, he brutalizes you. That's the best word I can describe. He brutalizes you. He just keeps on coming forward and he wants to inflict as much pain on you as possible. Like, I don't necessarily think he's a power puncher, but I don't think he's actually a one punch KO power puncher like I think Joe Smith is. Like, honestly, I think Joe Smith might hit harder. But what this guy does, it's just a constant barrage of just to the body, to the head. He's up close. He's he's digging you, elbow, everything. And like I said, he forces you to have several gut checks. And most people don't want that. Most people don't want that. Like, you even go and watch the, uh, the Vosdick fight. You look at the scorecards. That was relatively close until the stoppage. But again, Vosdick was always on the back foot having to really just dig deep and big deep breath, big deep breath because it's constant. And in the end, but to be able to just grinded him down. That's what he does. He grinds you down. And he's just, he's awful. Honestly, he's awful. Like, you'd have to pay someone a lot of money to get into the ring with him. You honestly do. So as much as I, I you know, I, I, I respect Canelo for jumping to 175, everyone, everyone knows the number one, and I kept on saying this throughout the, throughout the week, the number one 175 pounder in the world is this man. He is the number one. And Canelo would have got a lot of plaudits from me if he beat Bivol, but then I know how it would have worked. You know, everyone would have said, oh, he's the number one. He wouldn't have been the number one light heavyweight because this guy is still around. And this guy is, um, this guy is, is, is a scary, scary fighter. Uh, for Joe Smith, it would have been good to see him face Callum Johnson. Um, just because Callum, we know, is a big puncher. Callum put Baturbio down, let's not forget. He's a big puncher. It would have been good to see him face it. I think he would have knocked out Callum Johnson, but it would have been good. Um, but nonetheless, look, he's, he's a world titleist. And in his way, um, for potentially, I don't think it'll be next, but potentially a scrap against Bivol is a man that I think is... Um, a pound for pound top 10 like me and Tony Bellew were doing our pound for pound top 10 rankings and Bellew didn't have him in I think you know I think Bellew had him I think we discussed off camera I think Bellew had him like 14 or 15 for me he's, he's in the top 10 he's in the top 10 he's um yeah him versus Bivol would be such a good fight because Bivol like I said a very clean technical boxer where this guy is just a destroyer and I think those matchups are actually quite good because there will be times when Bivol just has to stand and trade. Good luck standing and trading with this man. Honestly, good, good luck. I'd like to see him. I think he's 34, 35 now, but let's have a look, quick look. Th bloody hell, 37. 37. Um, I was going to say I'd like to see him maybe have a go at cruiserweight, um, but he won't now. I think at 37, there's maybe only a year left in him. Maybe only a year left. And look, look, as much as as much as I think he's the number one, I mean, he does he he does get hurt in these fights. I mean, so there is wear and tear on the body. But for me, he's still fucking incredible. I've watched recently that fight with him versus Usyk in the amateurs, where I think they went two and one. I think Usyk beat him twice, but Toby beat Usyk once. Um, go and watch that scrap. And look. I mean, Usyk, we know, is a great boxer, and it's a long time ago. I think it was the 2012 Olympics, so it's a long time ago. But if you watch the way in which he just applies pressure on Usyk, who's a fantastic mover, and Usyk, you can see, is a lot bigger than him as well. But the way in which he just constantly applies pressure, he is a, a dangerous man, and I, I look forward to this fight because Joe Smith can crack him, but I know, I know he will get up, Baturbiev, and then it's a case of, all right, let's see what you got, motherfucker. And... <laughs> and yeah, frightening. Um, all right, what else have we got? Uh, Floyd Mayweather will face uh, Mikuru Asakura. Um, 
Floyd Mayweather is just taking all this easy money on the table. Um, he's, <laughs> look, good luck to him. Good luck to him. I would prefer, it's funny, some people have had digs at this. Uh, like, what's Floyd doing with these exhibition fights? I just read out to you uh, Devin Alexander versus Demarcus Cawley. And don't get me wrong, those guys w would never be able to sort of get the money that Floyd's getting for an exhibition fight. I'd rather they do this, what Floyd's doing, than have real fights, per se. Like, what Floyd's doing, I mean, if you watch his fight in Dubai, it's not, that's not even a sparring session. Like, I don't know what that is. That's just, that's just a little run around, right? It's just a little nothing. Got paid millions. I'd rather they do that than do what we see fighters do when the career is done and they continue fighting like Roy Jones having serious fights and again fucking Demarcus Cawley having serious fights I'd rather that I'd rather that but Floyd's look Floyd they're going to pay a million to do these things he's, he's going to do them he's going to do them um, Daniel Dubois uh, says he wants Dillian, Dillian White next uh, that's the fight I'm coming to clean up and take out whoever steady on steady on big man you beat Trevor Bryan, steady on. Not disrespecting your win, but that's Trevor Bryan. Everyone in the top 50, everyone in the top 30, I think, would have done that to Trevor Bryan. Um, but obviously, look, you know, you, I like it. You're calling out some people. It's good. I hate when fighters say, you know, whoever they put in front of me. It's the worst thing. When I interview a fighter and they say that, in my head, I'm just dying. I'm, I'm dying inside. Like, what do you mean? Call out someone. This is your opportunity. Call someone out. So it's good that he's done that. And I actually like the fight. Him versus Dylan White is a good one as well, by the way. I just, the idea of him cleaning up, steady. But I think Dylan White's a good one. Um, I think Dylan White is a free agent. So he can go to Sky and fight uh, Joseph Parker. He can go to BT Sports and fight Daniel Dubois. For Dylan White, I think it's going to be a case of, especially at this stage of his career, who's offering me the biggest check? Where's the biggest check coming from? And I still think potentially that biggest check will be with uh, the zone. But, but we'll see. Um... Uh, De La Hoya here saying the thing about Charlo and the whole uh, PBC stable is they hide behind Al Heyman. Um, I'm starting to think that's true. Honestly, I'm starting to think that's true. I mean, if you look at what other fighters have had to do to, to fight these PBC fighters, um, or even just to make fights for themselves, Haney has had to literally forego stuff with DAZN and go over to top rank and sign a, a deal just to make sure he can get that fight. So he's willing to kind of step out of the DAZN matchroom thing. You look at Canelo, um, who went to fight Caleb Plant. Obviously, Canelo wasn't signed to DAZN and matchroom, but had a deal with them, but said, okay, no, I'm going to go over there because I want that fight. You don't really see PBC fighters willing to kind of step out of theirs and go and get fights elsewhere. So I'm starting to believe that's true. And don't worry, you can make some really good fights just within PBC, but come on, surely these guys need to step out. Like, like Jamal Charlo versus Mungia. It's a big, big fight. And Jamal will get paid really, really well by Golden Boy in the zone to have that fight because it will do an arena comfortably. I think it will do very, very good numbers as well. But he won't do it. He won't do it. Some of you might be saying, why can't Mungir step over to BBC? Yeah, you're right. I mean, why can't he? Um, I, think, I think he probably would. I think if, if the fight was offered and... The only way it could happen is if Mungia went over to PBC. Trust me, I think that would happen. He says. Uh, Haney says, fight with Lomachenko and Tank interest him the most like that. I don't think it will be Eva next. I do think it will be Cambosos next. Um, and, and again, unless they're paying Cambosos big step-aside money or big money for him to not to have the, the rematch, then um, I think it's going to be Cambosos in the fall. That's very American of me. Um, in the autumn. <laughs> um, uh, Regis Progre lashes out at 140 pound rivals nobody ever says my mm -mm -mm name um, it, it, Regis Progre has had a weird weird run of sort of fights since the um, Josh Taylor fight um, I don't know who he signed with Progre um, who his manager is but they're not doing a good job they're not doing a good job at all. Um, and look, he might have got some good money. Obviously, he's fought uh, Triller. He fought on the Probellum card as well. So he might have got good money. But in terms of, he's almost been forgotten. I mean, really, Progre's almost been forgotten. Like, we should be screaming for Progre versus Tiafimo Lopez. He's almost just been forgotten, Progre. And it's not about guys calling you out. It's about your team making offers to these guys. So what? They call you out. What, what does that mean? This isn't fucking Twitter. Like, let's go and make some offers. Um... 
Let's have a look here. Uh, we are led to believe there's someone who I follow on Twitter that's supposedly in the know, and I guess he's knows either camp, but we're led to believe that um, Terence Crawford versus Errol Spence is like 90% done. Like 90% done and that fight will happen. Um, just checking the time and got a film at 12. That fight will happen um, in October. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Um, O'Hara Davis, uh, Sandal Martin fight gives me a chance to wipe smile off Eddie Hearn's face. I think Eddie Hearn will make that fight. I don't know if Sandal Martin coming off win against Mikey Garcia and then I was ringside for his most recent win. I don't know if he's going to be thinking, I want a bit more than O'Hara Davis. No disrespect to O'Hara. Um, but surely he's not thinking O'Hara Davis. Why, why would he? Um, but this is very interesting. I didn't really speak about this. And we'll, we'll end on this. Um, did you see that, that um, Ben Shalom interview, that, or the first 10 seconds got leaked, where Ben Shalom is basically saying, don't ask me this, don't ask me that, don't ask me this. And I think people have been outraged by it. Like, what? This is a disgrace. Guys, let me tell you now, that always happens. Like that's, that's, and I'm, what I mean by that is that's the norm. In fact, there's a couple of things I want to talk about, but that's the norm. Um, like normally what you get, you don't normally get a Ben Shalom, but you normally get a handler. That's say Ben Shalom's PA that, you know, before you even do the interview, they say things like, you know, you can't ask that question, don't ask that question. And you're upset about it, but you get it. And sometimes you try and maybe ask the question in a different way. But nine times out of 10, what Ben Shalom done was the norm. So don't be like, this is a disgrace. This is, no, no, that's just, ask any journalist, that happens. Um, so don't be too upset with Ben Shalom. And that's not me defending him because, you know, but it's just the truth. Another thing I want to talk about is Julius Francis. Now, um, that punch that Julius Francis landed was impeccable. I don't condone violence, but that fucking guy in the do-rag deserved it. Did he not? Did he not? Like, what was he doing? Like, like what are you doing? Why are you trying to antagonize and piss off? And, and I heard, by the way, that he was causing a lot of aggro um, in Box Park, but what, what are you doing? I've been in Box Park, I've worked there a lot recently, and Francis, as much as I'm friendly and know him, still scares the shit out of me. There's something about him. So why are you trying to antag antagonize a six foot three, 23, 24 stone, ex-British heavyweight champion? You're gonna get cracked. You're gonna get cracked. And um, look, Box Park have defended it. The police have said there's no further investigation, so he's okay. But yeah, that was, um, you don't lose it, do you? The step back and then smack. That guy's jaw probably will be wired for the next couple of years. That was as good a right hand as you get. And I'm, ha I'm happy to hear that um, Julius Francis won't lose his job because he's head doorman at Box Park. And every time I've gone there again, he's been fantastic with me. Guys, girls, peace and love.